Bernie Madoff, Elizabeth Holmes, the guy who calls you about your car's extended warranty. These people ran some of the biggest scams in American history, but none come close to the scam that is Stanford CS. In 2019, I graduated with a degree in computer science from Leland Stanford Junior University. And after working a CS job for two and a half years, I realized that 95% of what I learned at Stanford was fucking bullshit. In today's video, we will be diving to the very bottom of the Stanford CS iceberg and bringing all the dirty laundry to light. The stupid ass requirements, the stupid ass culture, and the stupid ass classes. So put on your scuba gear and let's go fishing. If you went up to a random Joe Schmo on the street and asked them, hey, what do you think should be in a CS education? They'd probably go, uh, I don't know, probably how to like, build a website or an app or something? Hmm. Build a website and build an app. These two things seem pretty basic for a CS education to provide, since it's only the entire fucking internet right now that's made up of websites and apps. Well, lucky for us, the omniscient overlords at Stanford CS know better than us. And instead of learning how to make an app, we can learn all about the fascinating world of registers. One of the biggest problems with Stanford CS has nothing to do with what happens inside the classroom at all. The CS curriculum, in my opinion, is set up super poorly, where the professors are more interested in teaching you theoretical bullshit Bruh. than actual practical skills that might come in handy one day to press a first date, or on Jeopardy, or here's a novel idea, at a fucking job. For example, if you go to the Stanford course catalog and type in UX, there's exactly one class that pops up in the CS department with UX in the title. One for UX. Literally everything you see when interacting with software, the user flow, the navigation, the app design is UX. Again, one class for this. According to Stanford CS, this class is so useless that it's been banished to take place once per year in spring quarter by application only and is not required for any CS majors. Meanwhile, classes like CS 110 are required by the major. We're gonna learn shit on such fascinating topics as semaphores and mutexes, which I haven't used at all in two years of working. Awesome. Here, I've got my program sheet, which is basically a form you submit that lists all the classes you took for your major. Now, just as a thought experiment, let's go through all the classes I took and play. Bullshit or not bullshit. Right off the bat, we have the math requirements. And I'm just gonna say it, these are all bullshit. Now, some are more bullshit than others, but let's peruse these requirements. The first thing you'll see is that you're required to take calculus, which is bullshit. Now, you might say to me, oh, introverted badness, calculus is actually really important if you're gonna have an AI or data science concentration. Fine, I accept that. Then make your requirement if you're gonna concentrate in one of those fields. There are plenty of fields in CS that require no knowledge of calculus. For example, little old me did not use calculus once in the last two years of working. Forcing everyone to learn calculus for CS is like if you were trying to learn how to cook a steak, but they first made you learn how to raise a cow, on the off chance that you might need to slay your own cattle one day. Then we have CS 103 and CS 109, which are semi-bullshit. In theory, I think it's a good idea to have math classes that cover the basics of what you need to know for CS, because even if you don't need to know calculus for a lot of CS, you do need to know some math. But these classes are bullshit because they are way too intensive for what a future CS grad would need for a job. Do we all need to know how to write a mathematical proof or what a Poisson distribution is? Oh, oui, oui, madame. No! By the way, I couldn't tell you the first thing about either one of these things, and if I needed either one for my job, I would just Google it. Yeah. I think CS 103 and CS 109 can be combined into one class and it would be fine. And then, if that weren't enough, you need to take two more math electives, bringing the minimum number of math units you need to take for your CS degree to 26. 
For reference, to graduate from Stanford in four years, you need to take an average of 15 minutes per quarter, which means if you want to major in CS, you're going to spend almost two thirds of the year learning just math and oh, no wow. CS. And then, if the math requirements weren't bad enough, we then get to the physics requirements, which amazingly might have even less relevance to the CS degree than the math requirements. Because you know what I really need to know before I start my job as a software developer moving a button over two pixels? Newton's laws, centripetal motion, and how magnets work. Just awesome. And just like math, you take a science elective, which leads me to the stupidest class I took for my, may I remind you, CS degree. Geology one. Huh? Yep. I took rocks for jokes. I learned about the different types of rocks. I touched some rocks. I went on a goddamn field trip to look at some rocks for my computer science degree. So, rocks for jocks counts for your CS degree, but you know what doesn't count for your CS degree? CS193P, aka iOS development. No, no, that's not a typo. Yes, the class on iOS Hi development doesn't count for the Stanford CS degree. The iPhone, the App Store, fucking Flappy Bird. Ever heard of that shit? Apparently, the class that would teach you how to make that is irrelevant to a CS education. But Geology 1! How can we have computer scientists in the field who don't know the difference between an igneous and sedimentary rock? Think of the children! All in all, you need to take 37 units to fulfill the math and science requirements for the CS degree. Which means, if you want to major in CS, your entire freshman year is going to be spent taking these bullshit classes and not writing a single line of code. Oh boy. And that's just the first part. No! There's a technology and society requirement, which is supposed to teach you how to not be suck and not build something that's going to lead to the downfall of society, which, again, sounds good in theory. In practice, the class I took for this requirement was kind of shitty and didn't really teach me how to be ethical. So for me, this class was bullshit. All right, finally, we get to the CS classes. We got the intro CS class here. No problems with that. We all got to start from the bottom before we're here. But engineering 40A and 40B, woo, baby. Imagine you wanted to be a chef and you went to culinary school. And then the people in charge were like, hey, you're going to take this class on how to build an oven. That's basically what this class is. In these classes, you learn about electrical engineering. And you build a bunch of shit and solder a bunch of shit. But again, I don't know why this class is a requirement. What? If someone wants to get into the robotics or hardware side of CS and build some freaky shit, sure, make it a requirement for them. But I guarantee you, I and a bunch of other people will never want to build anything. Look at you, boy. I'm just a little bitch boy who codes in Sublime. So I think it's stupid I had to take this get class. For some reason, I then had to take another CS elective for the engineering fundamentals section, even though I already take CS electives for the CS section. Apparently, this was so stupid that even the Stanford CS department realized it and removed the CS elective requirement from the engineering fundamentals section after I graduated. You just have to say that you're fine Thanks. when you're not really fine. <sighs> All right, guys, we're entering the peak bullshit zone. Finally, we get to some real CS classes. Not intro classes, not math or science or electrical engineering bullshit, real CS classes. That only took us 50 units, but alas, there is more bullshit to go. CS107 and CS110 are pretty solidly bullshit. I would understand if there was like a required three unit class on binary and pointers because that stuff is fundamental. But a full 10 units between CS 107 and 110? That's bullshit. These classes go way too in depth. Talking about random low level shit that might have been relevant 20 years ago, but for most modern developers has all been abstracted away. Most software engineers are just slapping together some CSS and React or writing a fuck ton of ugly ass Python code, and will never need to know anything about assembly or MapReduce. These classes should be required for people who want to learn systems, not everyone. 
CS161 is actually fine. It teaches you basic algorithms and how to use them, which is handy to know. Alright, back to our regularly scheduled bullshit. Here we have the track section of the CS major, which is basically what part of CS you focus on. My track was AI, aka the thing that's supposed to destroy the world. It was fine, I guess. I won't label it as bullshit because I actually learned some stuff in these classes. Though I will say, the AI track at Stanford is basically useless. It's too cursory to actually get you an AI job, while being hard enough to make you contemplate your existence when you're still doing your P-set at 4am. The problem here isn't what classes are in the track, but what classes aren't in the track. Let's go back to our friend Joe Schmo, who said a basic CS human should know how to build a website and build an app. The Stanford CS degree does not require you to learn one of these things. There's no requirement to take class on how to build a website, or set up a server, or write a backend, forcing you to go all Terminator on their ass and hunt out these classes. And these basic ass classes, which you think would be super important for a CS major to learn, are super rare. There is one class on web applications that counts for the major, CS142, that teaches some important basic shit. HTML. Server-side JavaScript, object-oriented databases. This is literally shit they teach at 8th grade STEM summer camp. And again, there's only one class on it that counts for a major, and it's not required. By the way, I didn't realize this until I was doing research for this video, but there actually is another Stanford CS class on this topic. CS 193X, Web Programming Fundamentals. But it doesn't count for the major! What the fuck? Meanwhile, there's also one class on compilers. Fucking compilers. I have no problem with learning about compilers, but to give the same relative resources to compilers as web apps makes no sense. I'm sorry, is there some fucking compiler revolution I'm unaware of? Do we think people are going to write the same amount of compilers as web apps in their lives? Apparently, according to Stanford, these classes are of equal importance to learn, since they're both just random electives you can choose to take or not take. How do you do that? How do you do that? You might notice a recurring theme. A lot of what Stanford CS does sounds good in theory. But in practice and with regards to what CS majors actually need to know to work in today's environment, it doesn't make sense. It focuses a lot on giving you a good foundation, which is code for teaching you useless bullshit that is a layer deeper than you will ever need to know. At Stanford CS, this leads to classes that should be requirements being electives, and classes that should be electives being requirements. When I go to learn to drive, it would also, in theory, give me a good foundation to learn how to build a car. In practice? Just teach me how to drive a fucking car. For those of you keeping score at home, here's how your time at Stanford would go if you decided to major in CS. Year one, you're taking just the math and science requirements for 37 units. Add in 10 units for thinking matters and power one, which are required for all freshmen, and that brings you to 47 units, which is more than the average 45 units that a Stanford student takes per year. So, if you're majoring in CS, year one, you're not writing a single line of code. No! Year two, you're taking the technology and society, engineering fundamentals, and core CS classes. Plus five units for power two, which brings you to 38 yeah. units. Leaving you with seven units to take fun classes so your soul doesn't leave your fucking body after taking nothing but hard classes for two straight years. So year two, mainly bullshit CS classes. Then finally, in year three, you can start taking the real CS classes. But even this is a very generous, speedrunny estimate, because odds are, you're not going to take 95% just classes in your major in the first two years. So, in reality, it's going to be halfway through your junior year before you can take any non-bullshit CS classes. Awesome! This is definitely worth 60k per year. Alright, listen. I already know what the counter arguments are, so let's get those out of the way. Hurt the derp, it sounds like what you're asking for is a boot camp education. 
Stanford CS is a liberal arts education that's supposed to lay the foundation for you to go out there and learn stuff like HTML and backend stuff on your own. Listen fool, I'm not asking for a boot camp education. I understand that languages and paradigms change, and if Stanford just taught mobile app development, that'd be bad, because that's not going to be here forever. That'd be like if in the 60s, Stanford CS just taught people how to code on those big-ass computers, and not the theoretical basics of CS, in which case, those people wouldn't have been able to adapt and would have been fucking wiped out like the dinosaurs. But is it too much to ask to learn both the theory and the practical stuff? What I'm asking for is a modicum of common sense to be applied, and for us to learn some skills that have real-world applications. I think students would appreciate learning stuff that would help make them employable, and not just being shit out into the world with a head full of trivia that isn't gonna help them get a job. I could walk out of Stanford with a CS degree, knowing nothing about HTML and everything about fucking geology. And that basically sums up the problem with Stanford CS. It doesn't make any sense. What are our priorities here? Can we apply a smidge of common sense? The next counter argument probably goes something like this. Herpty derp. Well, in college, you should be able to be independent and take control of your own education and choose the classes that are relevant for you even if they're not required. To which I say, college shouldn't be some stupid ass scavenger hunt to find the real education within the bullshit education. This shit, may I remind you, costs $60,000 a year. And now I also have to do the job of finding out what classes are good and what aren't. You, as a freshman, are an 18 year old who just graduated high school. If the higher ups at Stanford tell you a class is required, you're gonna assume it's important and actually gonna teach you some useful shit. Instead, if you actually wanna learn stuff, you have to realize the default CS education kinda sucks and find the good classes on your own. Oh boy. And we haven't even begun to talk about how poorly the classes are run. But we will now! Most colleges divide their year into two 15-week semesters. So you take two sets of classes Per year. But not at Stanford! In their infinite wisdom, Stanford has decided to run on the quarter system, which means the year is divided into three 10 week semesters, which means we take three sets of classes per year. The argument Stanford makes for this is some bullshit about allowing students to explore more classes, but in reality, it just causes professors to rush through the curriculum, which leads to a worse education. And nowhere is this more apparent, in my opinion, than CS? Because Stanford boasts that their classes are just as rigorous as those on the semester system, professors just end up beating their way through the syllabus, and you don't have a chance to breathe and let what you learned soak in before you're slamming the gas onto the next topic. I've literally had classes where I have a midterm week three. Yup, that's right, week one, introductions and syllabus, week two, learn the basic shit, week three, bam, midterm. What's going on here? Am I here to learn stuff or just speed run P sets? I once had a class where we had two midterms and a final all in 10 weeks. And the professor literally told us they were giving us an extra midterm to help us by giving us another chance to boost our grades. Really? You think another midterm is gonna help people? Did you maybe ask any students about that? The tests themselves are pretty awful ways of gauging how much students have learned. I've never had a job where I was locked in a dead silent room for three hours and forced to write code by hand. In real life, you can walk around. Think about the problem. Throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. But no. Apparently, the best way to get students to prove their knowledge to you is lock them in jail and have them brain vomit for you under duress. And if you think the tests are bad, wait until you hear about the P-sets. The P-sets are somehow simultaneously super long and hard and super unhelpful for learning. There are two types of P-sets. Written P-sets are worksheets where they ask you a bunch of questions and you have to write up your answer. These mainly pop up in algorithm intensive classes and fucking stupid. They ask you the same question like 
five this times. Is getting out of hand. They're super long, and oftentimes they're just very barely tangentially related to what you learned in class and require a lot of Googling to learn the actual shit you need to know to answer the questions. It'd be like if I taught you how to play a video game and then asked you to make the video game. Code P sets are P sets where, surprise, surprise, you have to write code. This should be like the cornerstone of the CS department, right? Students writing their own code. It brings to mind images of developers churning out beautiful code and hacking into the mainframe. These P sets should be super valuable learning opportunities, right? Instead, you barely learn anything with them because there is so much fucking boilerplate code. AKA, they give you a fuck ton of starter code and then ask you to write in a few functions to complete the code. What the fuck? In theory, this should be good, right? It saves you from having to code the boring, repetitive stuff and lets you jump straight to the juicy parts. In practice, we in here talking you about have no practice. idea how to write code from scratch. Just functions. For 99% of classes, I don't think I had to write any code on my own. And so, I feel like Stanford never taught me how to do shit on my own or be independent. It'd be like if I went to a wise Italian grandma to learn how to make a pizza. And she gave me a DiGiorno's and told me to slice some pepperoni on top of it. I'd be like, okay, I guess this is a pizza. But I didn't really learn how to make a pizza. The P sets are often so bad that classes have to provide a metric shit ton of office hours for them, where a bunch of hapless grad student TAs run around Huang Basement for three hours, doing their best fast talking auctioneer impression, but we're basically giving up and giving away the answer. In theory, office hours are good, right? Give extra help to those who need it. In practice, Office hours are often so overloaded that you would be lucky to get even five minutes with a TA. Which means office hours are there for one of two things. One, the classes are being taught so poorly that the only way to actually learn shit is to go to office hours to supplement the shitty education. Or two, office hours solely exist to boost the grades of people who have the time and energy to queue up for hours until a TA gives them a hint, aka the answer. It's a pretty open secret that professors care more about their research than teaching grad students. And then way underneath teaching grad students with the mole people is teaching undergrad students. You will just be another anonymous face among a sea of undergrads to them. And I'll concede, Stanford CS has a lot of students to teach and professors can get easily overwhelmed and they're dealing with the high demand relatively admirably. But still, I, I don't know, the vibes are just all off and I don't get the sense that Stanford CS actually cares about the students, just getting them out the door and graduated as efficiently as possible. So, I've pretty thoroughly roasted the quality of the CS education and probably put myself on some type of Stanford CS hit list. From everything I've said, it kind of seems to me that Stanford expects you to supplement the education they give you with internships. Like, to the point where your education would be incomplete without the practical skills an internship gives you. But guess what? Stanford provides zero help with finding internships or jobs. Get that weak shit out of here. None. Which is like, great, I'm paying 60,000 a year for an incomplete education. Sure, they'll blast you with generic emails about the career fair or random job openings, but that's about it. No advice on how to prepare or how to apply, just here are some jobs. Fight for them, fuckers. And Stanford has this department called Beam, which is supposed to help you find a job, but that is also pretty useless. I also, personally, pretty solidly dislike the CS culture and community at Stanford. The vibe is very much, we're here to do the least amount of work possible to get paid the most money. Which is fine, but it's not really a community that's gonna push you to learn. The vibe is very much, get your degree and become a product manager at some big tech company where you can do zero work and make a lot of money or 
Start a startup where you can hire a bunch of people to do all the work for you while you raise a bunch of money. Of course, I'm generalizing and this isn't everyone, but there are a lot more of this type of people than you would think. I think most Stanford students aren't interested in improving the world, which again is fine. I'm all about securing the bag, but I think there's this false impression that Stanford students are all about being at the cutting edge and revolutionizing the world when they're really about combining two APIs to sell it for $10 million or using their degree to climb up the corporate ladder and collect a check. From my experience, there really isn't a CS community at Stanford. Yes, there are a lot of CS students, which means you'll probably know a bunch of people majoring in CS, but they're all kind of fractured and doing their own thing and focused on leaving so that they can do their bullshit jobs. And the CS faculty is pretty content to let this happen. You get assigned an advisor when you declare CS, but guess what? I never spoke to my advisor. Never even got an email from him. And most people, I would bet, have that same experience. Advising doesn't really exist at Stanford. And of course, I know what you're gonna say. Oh, you should take gotcha. initiative and reach out to the advisor. But again, why is it on the student to initiate everything in this big intimidating power structure? The whole reason I'm here to get an education is that I don't know what to do and I need you to teach me. In fact, I think a big reason people co-term in CS at Stanford, aka get a master's in CS, is not because they particularly love CS or want to learn more, but because at the end of four years, they have no idea what to do with this degree and decide, might as well add another year. I feel like this all kind of boils down to what should a CS degree do? Teach you practical skills or theoretical bullshit? Okay, that was a loaded question, but you get the point. I feel like Stanford CS has taken the whole liberal arts education and learning how to learn thing too far to the point where you don't learn any practical skills from the CS degree. And that's kind of the big secret with Stanford CS. The actual quality of the education isn't that good. Of course, you might say, well, every CS department at every school has the same problems you just listed. Well, guess what? This isn't the fucking Southampton Institute of Technology. This is fucking Stanford. The frickin' US News and World Report's number one school for CS. And I think it's disingenuous to say that nothing can be improved in the CS department. These fucking CS majors are gonna affect all of us. They're gonna invent the next big thing to send dick pics on. So, for the love of God, can we actually teach them some stuff so they don't turn into lizard billionaires? Because, guess what? Either Stanford is gonna teach these guys how to make an app usable, or they're gonna learn it on their own. So please, can we teach these fuckers some web design and just skip the heap allocator stuff? Is anyone at Stanford gonna see this? Probably not, so if you're a student or an incoming student, you're gonna have to deal with the same bullshit system. Here are my tips for minimizing the bullshit. Take AP Calc or Physics if you can because that'll help you minimize the number of requirements you have to take. Take CS157 for one of your math electives because it's super easy. Don't concentrate in AI unless you're gonna get a master's in AI because the undergrad AI degree is useless as I said. Take some of the HCI classes because that's where the actual learning about how to design stuff is hidden. And apply to internships winter quarter. Yes, winter quarter, it's not too early and apply to a shit ton of them because you will get rejected. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like Stanford CS is a big old case of the emperor has no clothes. Stanford professors don't want to admit that the CS education they give is kind of shitty. Stanford alums don't want to admit that the degree they got is pretty useless and people from the outside looking in are too blinded by the screen of Stanford to see the degree for what it really is. I mean, all the CS classes you're gonna take at Stanford will probably only make up about 25% of your degree. So if you really wanted to, you could take all the CS classes in two years. So why can't you do that? Well, if you want me to answer, they want to make money off you. 
That's why your degree is full of arbitrary requirements that's going to take you four years to complete. That's why R&D charges a ridiculous amount for housing and food. And that's why Stanford wants you to believe that your degree is worth $60,000 a year. Your tuition money basically just goes towards subsidizing the faculty's research on campus. By the way, speaking of subsidizing, a quick expose. The Stanford Student Union collects hundreds of dollars per student per year to hand out to various student groups for absolute bullshit. Plane tickets to Hawaii for an acapella group? Sure! Mariachi teacher? Why not? What the fuck? Hey, yo, what Why the are fuck? some students subsidizing the wants of other students? Does it say Chase Bank on your forehead? Have these acapella fuckers ever heard of a bake sale to raise money for their Hawaii trip? It's stupid as fuck. Opt out of your student activity fee if you're at Stanford. The only reason the fee waiver is so hidden is because the student union knows that if it was more accessible, everyone would opt out of this stupid fee. It's honestly just really unfair that some students have to pay for other students' extravagant trips. Like, what if I want to go to Hawaii? Buy your own tickets to Hawaii, you fuckers! Back to Sanford CS. So, what is there to do? Honestly, I don't know. It's all kind of bullshit and fucked. And if anyone from Stanford CS sees this, they're probably going to figure out a way to cancel me to protect their egos. But since no one asked, here are my thoughts on how to fix Stanford CS. One, rehaul the curriculum. I get it. You're in the School of Engineering and because of bureaucratic stupidity, you have to require the math and science classes. But come on, those, those classes shouldn't be requirements. Combine CS103 and CS109 into one class, and combine CS107 and CS110 into one class. Add in required classes for front-end development and back-end development. And, for the love of God, let iOS development count for the major. That's a start. Number two, give less tests. Replace those tests with projects, and ideally, have those projects be stuff where students code stuff from scratch, rather than being given a bunch of starter code. Number three, switch to the semester system so you can teach stuff in depth. Yes, I know this isn't gonna happen, but it would be so good if it did. Number four, ask upperclassmen to volunteer to mentor underclassmen. Stanford students are all about doing the most when it comes to this shit. So I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of upperclassmen who will volunteer to teach students what classes to take and how to apply to our internships and other stuff. And number five, just give out free ice cream on Fridays. Those, those kids are stressed. One last note. I feel like a lot of students feel pressure to major in CS when they otherwise wouldn't because Stanford CS has this allure and they feel like they can't pass up the opportunity to make all this money. But speaking as a former Stanford CS grad, don't do it. It's not worth it to sacrifice that part of your soul to go chase the bag. Do what you want, chase your dreams, and take solace in the fact that Stanford CS kinda sucks anyway. Hold on, hold on. This is for the fucking end screen. This video literally took me so long, I spent three days standing in front of this frickin' green screen recording. We had so many technical difficulties. You better fucking all right, sorry, this is very aggressive. I would greatly appreciate if you guys liked the video for the algorithm and subscribed if you feel so inclined. But you don't have to do it if you want to. I'm not, you know, not pressuring you. Do what you want. Make your own life choices. But just know, I suffered a lot for this video. All right, thanks for watching.